Hello, 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 everyone. It is me, and I'm here on Bandcamp today, just checking things out. Just looking around, searching for whatever is, whatever is hot, whatever is interesting. And I just noticed uh, yesterday, I was just going through my feed and everything, and I couldn't help but notice there was uh, someone who had purchased on the front page uh, the business casual discography for a dollar. So basically what's going on here is that I just recently purchased about about uh, 200 some records from this one label that primarily produces a lot of vaporwave kind of music. And so you can see there's a ton of artists on here all of a sudden. I only had this uh, on my page very recently. So if I go back here, I'll show you. So, as you can see right here, let me just click on one of these things. They are selling the digital discography for just a dollar, like 80% off. It's pretty huge. Like, they have about, as it says, about 220 releases in their discography here. So, if we just go back to my, to my own thing here. I didn't realize Frank Javsky was part of that label, but his stuff is on here too. And I don't recognize a lot of the releases on this, but I will go through them just so I can give some recommendations to anyone who's interested in this label and anyone who's just kind of starting out in Vaporwave and might want some good starters, since I am not super informed about Vaporwave music, but I have listened to quite a few releases from this label, and I thought it would be cool to go through some of them and just give some recommendations. So, just going down here, just listening to that, that was kind of interesting. Um, just going down, I listened to that very recently. That wouldn't be a starter though, I think there would be some, there was some other stuff that I'd rather recommend. Um, So, here is a really interesting release right here called Gradient Horizon. I've listened to it a couple of times. It is a very mellow, almost sad kind of mood to it. It's a very, just very interesting, just very melodramatic, uh, kind of ambient, very slow sort of release. And I'm going to get back to that one later since I have a little bit more to talk about it, but um, I was just going to keep going down here and checking stuff out. So one thing that I wanted to talk about, because I did part of this video I did uh, earlier this week, and I kind of started looking more into this label and I thought I'd continue on that since there was a, a little bit more to talk about here. So uh, one thing I found really interesting was they did write an article on this, uh, this particular label, Business Casual. And so basically what they do is the owner that uh, runs this label, they have a, they basically release a new thing like every Friday. And I guess what people do is it's multiple people bringing in mixtapes or whatever they got, whatever the best stuff is, and seeing if they qualify for a release on this label. So I found that really interesting. And just going down here, there's also another, some more, uh, stuff that this guy had, this, the owner of this label, he had picked out and just said this is kind of some more interesting stuff in here, so I'll definitely I'll look through this a little bit more too. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I was not really aware at first the, just like the longevity of this project basically that's been going on and exactly how it worked, because it did seem like they released a lot in a very short amount of time because I got emails pretty frequently, but I didn't realize they released stuff every week, and that's got to be pretty interesting. So what they have here is they have a pretty interesting, uh, just this huge expanse of music here. So they have just a lot of variety in what they what they have because it's all just different artists. It's definitely not the same one unless it's a very prolific one. They're obviously all different people that have maybe the work qualified the whoever is picking them which i and i believe it's the the owner who kind of looks through all this stuff uh they pick whatever looks good and they release it on this label so 
it's just a big uh, conglomerate of a bunch of different artists, a lot of different sounds, a lot of different styles, just a lot of different stuff going on. And other than that, one thing that I found kind of interesting was, is other than that, I think they also, because I was looking at the Flint Jazz he released, and I was surprised that it was on there. And he's obviously, I think he might have his own sort of thing going on. And a lot of these people might even be on other labels too. But I think they have this thing, it's called the BizBox, or it's called something, and they release, like, reissue the thing. So that's would uh, they release the Frank Jabsy stuff. Because I just found that kind of interesting, and it was kind of cool to get some more insight on that, because I was not aware of this label and exactly what they did. But, yeah, so that is basically um, some more in-depth uh, stuff about this label. I highly recommend you read this article if you're more interested in this. Down here, we got some more stuff. A lot of interesting covers here. It's obviously a vaporwave. Um, it is obviously a huge vaporwave label, as you can tell by the artwork. A lot of just weird 90s inspired cover art. Lots of colors, a lot of more Japanese kind of designs on all of these covers here, a lot of anime, a lot of just really interesting, very like postmodern, abstract sort of stuff here. So I'm just going down, seeing if I find anything interesting. And the one release that I kind of wanted to talk about the most would be probably this one. Load in here. All right. So this is uh, 100 Mornings by Windows 96, and I believe it was the last album. I think this was the same artist by the um, last album that I was showing you guys. So this album right here is one of my favorite vaporwave, vaporwave releases from this label here, and it's just this very like jingly techni tech like very techno kind of music. But very soothing and calm to listen to. I really like the sounds that are <coughs> so I brought up on this record. There's just a lot of interesting stuff that's going for it. And it's definitely a very accessible release as well. Like it's not super outsider, it's not just a bunch of noise, it's very soothing and pleasing to listen to. It reminds me of a lot of older computer hardware sound effects and noises that you'd hear from that earlier era of like those Macintosh and those Windows old computers. It just kind of sounds like music that would come from there. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting uh, release and I also really enjoy the cover too. I just, I like how that purple kind of matches with the sort of bright greenish color and it all looks like something you'd see on maybe like a really old like record because I've seen like these very futuristic designs and even covers going back from the 70s, they kind of had these weird lines and all this sort of different kind of colors and shapes that were very, like, the lines are very, um, are very bold and they aren't, and they're usually straight or kind of wavy in this weird sort of style. You see this a lot from, like, the 70s and 80s, so I find that cover to be pretty intriguing. And other than that, um... As I was saying before, it's just a really good, uh, just an accessible release for people who might be interested in Vaporwave. I definitely recommend it with a few other releases that I've, <coughs> that I've listened to. Sorry about the cough. Um, but yeah, so this is just a recommendation that I'd give to anyone who's interested in this label and the music that it has to offer. So, as we can go down here, there's a few of these releases that I haven't listened to myself yet, but I've heard that they're pretty solid, and I think uh, this one was one of them. I think this was uh, Pad Chennington uh, recommended this album, so if anyone who's into that guy who watched the videos, he gives that a shout out, and he gives probably some more in-depth information about it. And the experience that you get from it. Um, there's another one that I, it was a recommendation that he had as well. It was up here somewhere. 
just keep going up. It was this one. It was Iconic Bitch. This is supposed to be a pretty solid release. And I listened to a song or two from this, but I've got, I have yet to dig into it, as I will with many, many of these other releases here. And keep going up. I think I already uh, shouted this one out, but this is another album that, if anyone liked that other, that Windows 96, that 100 Mornings album, this is another release I'd recommend, because I have listened to this, so at least most of this release, and it's similar in the sound of uh, the other release, and I don't know, I found it to be pretty solid as a vaporwave release. And it's also another more, like, easier listen for people who might be trying to get into the genre. So, that is... Gradient Horizon. Going up here, I'm just looking around, seeing if there's anything that looks a little familiar. And, yeah, most of this is pretty much a mystery to me. I'm not familiar with a lot of this, this music, a lot of these artists. But like many things, I'll eventually get through at least the meat of some of this stuff. But yeah, this is, uh, just if anyone's interested in Having, getting a lot of vaporwave music and wanting to give it a listen, I definitely recommend going to the Business Casual uh, Bandcamp page and just buying their discography if you're all that interested. It's only a dollar. It's pretty cool. This is Cock of the Rock 14. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all having a nice day. And I'll see you next time.